Welcome to the Poly Psych Podcast. This is your host, Anthony Lindsay. And Stephanie Moreno. All right. So first thing on deck is a lone gunman named Stephen Craig Paddock started shooting from the 32nd floor of a Las Vegas hotel late Sunday, killing at least 50 people and injuring more than 400 who were attending a country music festival. Uh, they're calling it the deadliest mass shooting in American history. Uh, witnesses say we heard what sounded like firecrackers going off. Then all of a sudden, we heard what sounded like a machine gun. People started screaming that they were hit. Uh, we started running out, and there were pro- probably a couple hundred people on the ground. Uh, his brother said he had no religious or political affiliation. He has no military background, and he was just, and I quote, a regular guy. His brother was confused about how he got the weapons in the first place. Uh, so my first question is, should we politicize it? I am not and will not be afraid to keep fighting for common sense reforms and along with you achieve those on behalf of all who have been lost because of this senseless gun violence. Once again, innocent people were killed in part because someone who wanted to inflict harm had no trouble getting their hands on a gun. How do you, what do you mean by politicize? Like, how do you politicize just a regular guy shooting up a bunch of people? There's a, a bunch of different ways. So the Republicans will typically say, don't politicize it. And by politicize it, it means don't even bring politics into the discussion. As motive or whatever? Mm-hmm. As, a, as a motive, don't don't talk about political solutions to this problem. Like, Republicans will initially say, our hearts and prayers go to the victims, and then that'll extend for uh, maybe a week or so, and then we move on to another news cycle. So his, his, the big problem that Democrats oftentimes point out is that Republicans will say our hearts and our prayers go out to the victims. Uh, now's not the time to politicize it. When everyone is ready for a solution, fast forward one week, and this is like, this is no one honestly cares anymore. Mm. So- no one is willing to change gun laws. No one is willing to uh, restrict uh, some gun purchases. Like, we're just not going to do it because this, we're not on the heels of a mass shooting anymore. So mm-hmm. Republicans literally, in order to keep gun laws off the table, will say, don't politicize it. Which, uh, on its face, is believable to a lot of people. But, I mean, they may just be trying to protect the gun lobby. Mm. Democrats will say that this is the time to politicize it. Like, first of all, you, they are politicians. Like, mm. gov- like governors, uh, congressmen, the president himself, he is a politician. So the idea that something huge happens in the country, but now is not the time for, for, for a politician to politicize, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense. Because it never would be. Like, if not now, then there is then no never. better time. Nope. And never. Oh so here's the thing. There have been... Uh, several uh, mass shootings uh, in the United States. We had just in 2016, you had the Orlando, Florida shooting, 50, uh, 50 killed, 53 injured. You had Blacksburg, Virginia, 32 killed, 17 injured. That's 2007. 2012, Newtown. Uh, 1991, you had uh, Texas, the Killeen. Um, you have San Bernardino in 2015. You had uh, Edmond. 1986, you have Fort Hood, 2009, Birmingham, 2009, Aurora in 2012. Like, the mass shootings essentially come back to back to back to back. We've actually had more mass shootings in the last 10 years than we had in the 50 years before it. So they are becoming more frequent, and part of it is the access to firearms. At least that is the most convincing, easy-to-grasp argument. So uh, as far as gun laws go, uh, 13,286 people were killed in the United States by firearms since 2015, according to the Gun Violence Archive for BBC, and uh, 26,819 people were injured. Um, Of all murders in the United States, 60% were by firearm, compared with 31% in Canada, 18% in Australia, and just 10% in the UK. Um, But here's the caveat. 49% of shooters obtained their firearm legally. Would that be through those like through those loopholes that we have available right now? Some where of them obtaining are a firearm legally is not necessarily the problem. It's whether the legal process and like whether just because you buy it legally does that mean you have you are responsible enough to own one? Does yeah. that mean that you've been screened that you you know have maybe have no like criminal intent? 
Yeah, there there are a lot of loopholes really that, that can be know. exploited, and uh, technically you would get it legally, but uh, you could be on the terrorist watch list and purchase a firearm. I think that there should be background checks, uh, and I've always uh, favored that. And uh, but as far as uh, the kind of registration, I'm not so sure that that's so important. But I've always supported background checks. You have that loophole. You have the gun show loophole where you can essentially purchase a firearm some, from the back of someone's truck, and yeah. there there really is no background check whatsoever like federal or state background check, which means that you could be anybody. You have straw man purchases. So you have the cartel who will come over or not. The cartel won't come over. They'll send someone over who has a clean record to buy guns to give to another people. We had a uh, situation in, I want to say Nevada, Texas, some border town where they uh, were supposed to keep track of these firearms. They were going to sell firearms to obvious straw man purchasers for the cartel. Mm -hmm. And they were supposed to keep track of them. And, they didn't. We had to pry these out of the uh, administration. Uh, it was Senator Grassley who actually f made the first inquiry. And remember, it was February of 2011 that the Department of Justice said to Congress there was no gun, run gun walking and they didn't let these guns out of their, their, their view. That was a complete and total lie. And so we've had to go to court. Chairman Issa issued a subpoena. But now the court has ruled mostly in our favor, and the Department of Justice has had to cough up nearly 20,000 new documents. So, actually, one of those firearms ended up killing a marshal. Wow. Yeah. Um, so, there's... a hard time. Right. It's a tough story. So, the uh, gun murders uh, by country. Uh, if you look at the top 10 countries, mm -hmm. uh, that's by uh, per 100,000 people uh, killed by firearm. Honduras comes in at number one. Uh, El Salvador, number two, Jamaica, number three, Guatemala, number four, uh, St. Kitts, uh, number five, Trinidad and Tobago, six, Colombia, seven, Belize, eight, Puerto Rico, nine, mm. and Belize, number 10. So America isn't even in the top 10, technically. America is actually number 26 in uh, um, gun deaths per 100,000 people. But small caveat to that bit, uh, those were all, if you notice, uh, Undeveloped countries. Those were developing countries. These are not. These are not developed countries. Which if indicates you look at, what, though? If you look at, it's bad. So if you look at developed countries and the rate per one hundred thousand people, um, America is number one by almost tenfold. I would say. Um, so United States has three point two uh, deaths per one hundred thousand people killed by a firearm, versus I think the next one is Switzerland with uh, 0.8. And then it drops off again. Uh, Canada, 0.5. Ireland, 0.5. Germany, 0.2. Uh, Netherlands, 0.3. Australia, 0.2. Norway, 0.1. We're at 3.2. That's per 100,000 people. So that's a huge disparity. And for a developed country to have this level of gun violence, is it speaks to the culture of the United States. Like, are we so obsessed with our, our, our firearms that we're unwilling to compromise that particular freedom. So hunters themselves will have arguments against um, changing the gun laws because it is kind of uh, difficult for them to simply transfer their guns from themselves to a loved one, a, uh, their son, their daughter. Like they just want to pass it down. And yeah. the, all of these laws make it an arduous experience. Mm -hmm. And if you are, if you're, if you are a, um, a, a hunter who's against like changing of the gun laws, like you may be like perfectly responsible with your firearm. You may have been a former military that you've taken every gun class that there is. You're perfectly responsible with yours. And this idea that you have to go through extra loopholes, extra steps, or even your, your freedom itself may be compromised because of some extreme event. And that's exactly what this is. Like you have to put it in perspective. Like there are 300 million plus people in the United States and we have a mass shooting what? Maybe, or actually technically, I think there's a mass shooting. There's one per day, technically, because mass shootings are defined as like four plus people killed via firearm. In one location. So, yeah. So there's a, there's technically one mass shooting per day in the United States. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, the, the odds are still small that you will be killed via firearm. So this idea that, oh, I should, I should give up my rights because of this extreme thing, yeah. it's not really fair. Is that, it's, it's kind of frustrating, though, to think of it on, like, when you don't have any skin in the game interest, like, you know, I personally don't own a firearm. You do, but I, do. <laughs> I don't. Yeah. And, I mean, honestly, either way, I'd be fine with, with or without one. But it just seems like 
to um, like when I, when I'm from the outside looking in, why would I why would I have an, any objection to a law any uh, any kind of law that could make this a little bit more streamlined process to to prevent um, people getting a hold of all these all these weapons and firearms and stuff that don't that have no business having them and it's not for like hunting purposes. I understand like hunters in um, Montana and Colorado, Wyoming, like it's a little bit more of a, a rustic atmosphere out there and they need them for protection and people hunt for food and all of this. And that's great. And I understand your argument, but like, are you really going to make your build your entire argument based on, oh no, this will be inconvenient for me to go the extra mile and do this or that. If you really want them that bad and there, there could be a way to hinder the, the amount of deaths in the country by adding on a little bit more paperwork to yourself what is the problem it's an individual freedom thing i think it's but we're not taking away any freedoms we're just we're just adding on a little bit of extra paperwork to 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 keep people more accountable for and to be able to hold them responsible to be able to track down where the all these rifles came from from when this guy supposedly had no business carrying them in the first place but he just waltzes into a like multi-million dollar resort hotel and with with a bit with a full like arsenal am i completely uh, off base here no you, you're right we I mean, there's, a hard time. yeah it's it's a tough story because so many people died in this in this one instance but then within each state has the right to change their gun laws so as of right now you may have a gun in north carolina but you can't even drive through uh dc with that firearm um there are a lot of laws like already in place to prevent Certain things in inner cities, uh, same with like uh, Chicago uh, has strict gun laws. And essentially what criminals will do is they'll just go to the next uh, city over. They'll go to the next state over if they need to and just bring the gun back. So they it's not preventing criminals so much as it's a, it's a preventing law abiding citizens. Um, I personally don't think it's very difficult to get a gun. I live, uh, so I'm, I'm in North Carolina and I got a firearm by filling in my name, my first name, last name, address, social security number i think those were the only things that they asked me for uh on a, the state website and then i waited did i wait a day i think they approved me instantly i'm not i can't remember it was either i waited a day or they approved me instantly. you had the it was thing fast. Like, like in a week okay yeah they so, so you. yeah so i got that and then i went down they they approved me i went down to the courthouse i said hey i got approved i gave them my name and they gave me a certificate where i can go purchase a firearm and then i just when i had the cash i just went and got a firearm it was really straightforward i imagine that if i was a felon they may have uh, said no you can't have one uh but there was no there was no mental check there was no home check like i could have had mm -hmm. a home where like there's there's uh domestic violence literally every day yeah. that's a that's i could have been depressed i could have been extremely depressed i could have uh had anxiety so disorders i could have had schizophrenia like, i could have had a lot of stuff going on with me and i was i would still be able to get a firearm um, they didn't really ask who was around me. I could have been, I could have been a straw purchaser. I could have went in, got the firearm and given it to my neighbor. Mm -hmm. Like if they had looked at, at, uh, maybe if they looked at the people around me and it turns out in the, on the same floor across the hall is a felon who, uh, is a gang leader. Maybe they should ask some questions. Maybe, maybe they should have a task force specifically for looking into people's backgrounds and in depth when there is some some problem and in the computer age where it's so easy to look into different people's background maybe this is it when it's so easy to take in huge amounts of data and parse it out to find any anomalies you would think that they would start to use that when it comes to gun purchases so here's what i want you to do uh, if you're listening to this go to polypsych.org if you have a way to fix the gun issue uh, or you don't think that the gun issue is a real problem uh, go to polypsych.org and tell us what you think. Uh, you're able to upload a post there. Um, if you become a member, you can just go to publish and then you can uh, tell us what you think. Tell the world what you think. Um, again, it's 100% free. Uh, you just go to polypsych.org, sign up to be a member, and then you can publish uh, and tell us what you think about the, the shooting and gun laws and the constant the constant like fear that we live in that there will be a shooter around like any corner. Is that justified? Is that... Is that even a thing? Because, I mean, statistically it's not, but it still feels that way. It still feels like we should live in a, a state of fear. Uh, anyway, go to polypsych.org and let us know what you think. That's it. Bye.